guys. I am in the streets of Montreal, the U equals U summit, and with me is Carl. <laughs> I'm so excited, and you've taken my job, Dory. Today I've taken his job, and I'm interviewing him. So tell me five things I do with you. Five things you don't know about me. Uh, I'm afraid of snakes. Me uh, too. I'm afraid of heights. I love to travel. Maybe you knew that one already. Yeah. Um, what else was? I have a dog named Gus, and um, this is the highlight of the conference so far, meeting you in person. Me too. <laughs> so meet Carl. Hi everybody. And follow Plus Life Media. Please do. Yeah. Thank you, Dory. You're hired. channel. My name is the amazing Dori Moramuracha. I am still in Montreal, Canada and I have actually enjoyed this country. I have. I'm tired but I have enjoyed the country. So and today I get to host a very very amazing person. Now today I am doing the, I am reversing the roles. The interviewer becomes the interviewee. <laughs> so all the way from Plus Life Media is a Carl Please introduce yourself. Oh, you are the amazing Doreen. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm Carl Schmidt from Plus Life Media. I'm Australian, but I live in Los Angeles. Uh, and Plus Life Media is my online digital platform where we're all about fighting HIV stigma by talking to everyday people mm -hmm. who just happen to be living with HIV mm -hmm. and by showing those everyday people, like yourself, mm -hmm. um, that you can thrive, you can celebrate, you can love, mm -hmm. you can. Be your best self, yeah. and that those three little letters HIV plus don't define, don't define you. And and so that's why we started Plus Life, and we talk to people, and hopefully people connect by watching our our content, and they go, ah, oh, that could be like me. Mm -hmm. And so that's our hope, and that's what we do. And that's how I met you, and I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm look, I have goosebumps. I'm so excited to be standing next to you. So uh, and it's it's such an amazing job that you do. And uh, I don't know from a media perspective because most of the times I talk a lot about HIV every day because mm -hmm. the media in my country specifically waits for World AIDS Day. But you want to talk about it every day. Why is it that Plus Life wants to talk about HIV every day and not just wait for World AIDS Day? Because HIV doesn't just wait for World AIDS Day. Mm -hmm. HIV happens and it's part of everyday life. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but the problem is, like you said, we don't talk about it in an everyday way. And until we do talk about HIV in a very everyday casual way, mm -hmm. there will remain the stigma that you know all too well about. Yeah. So in my role at Plus Life, and I also have, a, sometimes I'm on ABC News in America, mm -hmm. I get to go to the Oscars and things like that. Yeah, so, I've seen you with very good people. <laughs> so, but so when I have an opportunity mm -hmm. to, on, on national or international television, mm -hmm drop in, oh, and I'm living with HIV, just in doing that, people sitting at home can go, oh, that's not what I thought HIV looked like. I thought HIV looked like a skinny dying man or a drug user or, you know, all these stereotypes that the, the media and, you know, organizations pushed out in the early days because they didn't know how to stop things. Um, so, yeah, for me, HIV should be an everyday conversation. I also believe Doreen, that the more you say HIV, the less scary it becomes. You know, we used to say, I don't know about where, where you're from, in the part of the world where you live, but we used to say, instead of saying cancer, people used to go, the C word. Now the C word means something else. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> it means something else now, but people couldn't say cancer. Now we say cancer all the time, it's not a problem, and, and we're not, I mean, no one wants cancer, but it's not, you're not terrified when you hear that word. And I, I think that's what we have to do um, with the letters HIV and the plus symbol mm -hmm. is the more we say it, the more people hear it mm -hmm. and they see it coming out of our mouths, mm -hmm. the less scary it is. Very, very true. I do agree with you about that because the more, the more I feel like the more we talk about it, the more we normalize it. Yes. And th that is one thing that we need to keep really doing because 41 years later and HIV is still here, we need to put in a lot of work. So. I want to ask you as a public figure living in Fiji. I'm public? Yes. Okay. How is that? You have a very vibrant circle. How is that? Um, you know what? I think it's fine. For the most part, people have, uh, treat me normal and, and that's good. 
I'm sure that there are people, we all have our haters, um, and I'm sure there are people who probably have not nice things to say about me, but I don't have time to listen to that, Dorian. Yeah. I take advice from you. <laughs> I smile and celebrate life, because who has time for that? We are all so busy. Yeah. We only have such a short amount of time on this planet. Mm -hmm. And if we're too busy engaging in all the negativity, well, that's not good. And it also doesn't, it's not good for our bodies, it's not good for our soul, it's not good for our immune system. Yeah. So why bother with it? So um, it's not, look, I'm not going to lie, it's nice when people say, oh, thank you and come up to me in the street. I'm sure you've had plenty of that yeah. here yourself in this conference. <laughs> um, that's a nice feeling. And to know that by me just being honestly, just my honest, authentic self, mm -hmm. it can inspire somebody else, great. Also, by me just being my true, authentic self, yeah. I don't have to remember, oh gosh, I have to be like this or I have to be like that. I can just get on with life. And uh, but, and you see that what you just said is something that a lot of people really struggle with in terms of accepting themselves, just being comfortable in their well, how did you how did you figure out to accept yourself? The thing about acceptance is it's not just something you figure out. It's something that just comes to you. Yeah. It's more of like a, a, a deja vu moment. Mm. Like you reach a point and you're like, um, why am I wasting time in denial and so much stigma? Because the thing is, we waste a lot of time. And yesterday I was telling a friend of mine that life is very short. And he's like, no, life is not short. It is actually very short. So the more time you spend in, in uh, regret, in denial, self-stigmatizing yourself, not taking your airways, the more time you waste. Yeah, well, that's the same goes to what I was just saying about the more if you listen to the people who have, have negative things to say about you, you're wasting enjoying the sunshine of life. Yeah. Very, very true. And how long have you lived with HIV? I was diagnosed uh, on October 3rd, mm -hmm. 2007. So, uh, 14 years, I guess. Okay. I'm not good with the math. <laughs> it's okay. No. But, but um, I, was, I had, it was not long after my 27th birthday. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine a young 27-year-old gay man, mm -hmm. and I was living in London. Yeah. I was like, woohoo, party! Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, coming into my own as a young adult, mm -hmm. and then suddenly I was diagnosed, and like many of us, I think, I felt the handcuffs were slapped on me, and that was it. The only love I might have, if I ever have it, would be with someone who is HIV positive. Mm -hmm. The only sex I could ever have would be with other HIV positive yes. people. Um, and, and for a better part of 10 years, until I learned about U equals U, mm -hmm. I believe that. So from 27 to 37, prime years of being a young, active, healthy man, mm -hmm. I believed I was trash. Um, and that does a number on you. And we, we talk a lot about stigma, Doreen, mm -hmm. but we should talk also about internalized stigma. Yeah. And it wasn't until U equals U came out mm -hmm. and, and I embraced that, and with help of my therapists and doctors, mm -hmm. I realized, my gosh, I have all this internalized hatred mm -hmm. and belief mm -hmm. that I'm damaged and I'm no good yeah. and you know I'm still working on that mm -hmm. we are all a work in progress right exactly we are. so but yeah I feel it's been a while but and you see the thing is one thing about internalized stigma is the only person who can solve it is actually you correct a lot of, I, like I just read one of my inboxes today and somebody is asking me how can they be happy again and how can they learn to accept themselves again I'm like the thing is, this is a personal thing. Yeah. There is, even if I tell you all the nice words in the world, even if I give you all this uh, rosy feeling and I want you to feel nice and about you yourself. And you will be great and exactly. it gets better. I am not going to change your mentality no. because it's literally in here. Yeah. And it's for you to reach that mentality, that mindset of no, there is nothing wrong with me. And I usually tell people, it's not a, something you're going to do in years. It's something you do every day. Every day. At the same way that people tell me, how do you stay adherent to treatment? I tell them it's something I do every day. Because if I start looking that 17 years from now, I'll still be on air. It's sure. I will definitely not take it. You know, it's interesting that you say that and, and how you take your ARVs every day. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was in India recently and mm -hmm. asked by a, a group of uh, HIV positive children mm -hmm. in an orphanage, mm -hmm. how do you stay, make sure you don't forget? And if this might be overly simple, right? Mm -hmm. Most of us brush our teeth every day, yeah? yeah? Mm -hmm. So I said, keep your meds next to your toothbrush. Mm -hmm. So every time you pick up your toothbrush to brush your teeth, it's there, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's just something we do every day. I mean, for me personally, mm -hmm. I have it every day at breakfast time. Yeah. So I just know that when I have my breakfast, there it is. 
but we brush our teeth twice a day, we're mm -hmm. supposed to. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you put it, but you know, and that's, that's your reminder, because it is, it's really important. Um, but to the point of, um, you know, how can you become happier and how can you do, deal with all of that? Mm -hmm. For me, it certainly has been, and I think maybe it's similar for you, mm -hmm. is in accepting that this is not going anywhere. Yeah. And so then we have to live our lives. And by living my truth and being honest with myself about that, mm -hmm. It's like, oh, we check by my little friend inside, you know? I, I, there's that, and for me, that's how I accepted it. And, and that can take time for a lot of people. Yeah. But the, the thing is, you're allowed to, I always say, when you get knocked down, you're allowed to sit on the ground for a little while and cry and stamp your feet and say, why me, why me? But it's how you get up. It's how you pick yourself up. Some people jump straight back up and go on with life. Some people take a little bit longer, one step at a time. But it, the important thing is, you get up. You can't stay down on the floor in the dirt and the mud forever. Okay. You can't. It's not fair on you. It's not fair on your friends and your family and the people who care about you. Um, but, but more importantly, it's not fair for you. You've got to get up. It can take time. And it takes the time that it takes. And but this, once you stand up, I think we all hold our heads up and go, boy, what was I doing down there for so long? <laughs> and this week, uh, I, I, one of the sessions, somebody said, at the end of the day, you are the most important person to yourself. Be kind to yourself no matter the circumstances. When things are bad, when things are good, when things are ugly, be kind to yourself. And I think that is the one thing we always forget because we are always, everybody is always selling us the narrative of be kind to a stranger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, but I, what if, I'm not kind to myself. Well, so you can't, if you can't be kind to yourself, RuPaul says it differently, but I'm not going to say that because it includes swear words. But, but, it, but yeah, it's true. If you can't be kind to yourself, then how can you be kind to others? I also think it is important, Dorian, mm -hmm. that it's okay to be sad, and it's okay to be frustrated, mm -hmm. and it's also okay to be angry. These are good things. They're healthy things. We have to get angry sometimes. We have to get frustrated. But it's, as again, how do you pick yourself up from that and move forward? Yeah. And that's the important thing, and that's the great work I think you do on, on this channel mm -hmm. by empowering people all around the world yeah. with your positivity and what you do. That gives them hope. So I think I want to say personally thank you for the amazing work you and this channel do. I, I try my best on that. And uh, I want you to just send one message to somebody back at home, somebody who is struggling with their appearance, who does not believe in you, equals you, who is struggling with the disclosure of the HIV status to their friends, their partner, their social circle. I just want you to tell that one person struggling and looking at HIV as this big mountain, mm. what would you tell them? I would tell them, don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on yourself. Sometimes it seems easier to just give up. No, take one step at a time, one day at a time, and you'll find that you slowly walk out of the shadows because the sunshine of life is beautiful and it's warm and it's embracing and you can do it. Thank you so much, Carl. Thank you, Doreen. For honoring my invite. Of course. And uh, thank you to everybody who has watched this particular episode. Please don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and share it very wildly. Until next week, bye-bye.